Hello, everyone. Today, we'll talk about how to get uh, better performance out of uh, MariaDB uh, database. But before that, let's uh, briefly cover the trends which uh, I have been seeing in the market for about last uh, five uh, to 10 uh, years, which uh, I think makes this presentation important and relevant. One, if you look at overall in average, we see really a reduced database experience. We see fewer databases which are really managed by professional uh, DBAs and more managed by developers and uh, jack of all trades, which may be responsible for infrastructure overall or have some other responsibilities is not really focused all their career on uh, database alone. What you also see is what there are a lot more database deployed as so-called uh, fully managed database uh, in the cloud. And what happens in those cases is what typically uh, cloud vendors doing that fully managed deployment don't focus too much on squeezing as much as possible from existing database vendors, but suggesting their customers to run their bigger issues because, well, that's easier for them and that actually provides uh, more uh, revenue as well. What we also see, of course, in the world that we have more and more apps, more and more software in general, as well as uh, uh, more and uh, uh, more uh, uh, data uh, out there, uh, right? So with all those trends, I think what that makes with the database performance, and what well, that means MariaDB performance is that is where you store your data, is uh, uh, very important both for your uh, software users, for them to have a good experience because everybody hates when an application is slow. It's also important for your company bottom line because if you are wasting much more money on the database uh, than you should, and in our experience, typically uh, average user spends three to times, uh, three to five as much on their database deployments, uh, in particular in the cloud, uh, as they should. And also for environment, because guess what? All those servers uh, doing the query process and they consume, uh, uh, consume energy, which as all we know, not particularly good for, uh, for environment. So we'll focus on the 10 tips uh, in this presentation, which are focused on getting your poorly tuned database, something which you would uh, find in a case in a database is not really managed by the experts who, are, uh, who don't know what they're doing. And I would see if you apply those 10 tips, you uh, can get 10 times better performance or 10 times less cost, 10 times less impact to environment, right? Whatever your measure of success is. Okay. The first suggestions which I would uh, give is to run a recent MariaDB version, because obviously old versions, they are not as powerful, taking a good advantage of hardware and operating system. They don't have many state-of-art optimizations. And uh, also uh, you may be even finding some advice you he see here uh, or in the internet, not really working if your database is too old. And I think that's in particularly relevant now because MariaDB 10.7 is released candidate as I'm recording this presentation and chances are it will be uh, stable by the time you see this presentation or mm, shortly after. The second advice in particular for MariaDB is not to run with defaults because there are some other database technologies may be designed to take the whole resources of their uh, system they are running for. That is not how MariaDB is designed. MariaDB is designed that, uh, to be kind of minimize resource consumption in a shared environment. So if you deploy MariaDB on your laptop and or on your server to give if anything else, it just doesn't take on resources and slows everything down. So if you wanted to all resources, you really need to 
give it that uh, uh, permission to consume all resources on a server. You'll find uh, a lot of articles about the tuning uh, MariaDB settings, but these are uh, top settings which I would uh, recommend to uh, to get right. And that typically give you uh, the very big return for your buck for most uh, uh, database environments. That ensures, for example, database can get uh, a lot uh, of connections, much more than default, as well as uh, use enough uh, memory for database cache, which is typically where a lot of performance gains are mm, possible. You also want to consider operating system limits. Mm, uh, operating system limits. Now, if you're looking at on uh, Linux, Linux is actually quite good scaling itself according to the uh, environment. And while there are a lot of things you can tinker with in Linux for advanced performance optimization, typically the most important one to get right is number of open file allowed for a process. If that doesn't match your needs in terms of connections or amount of tables you're working on, you may be getting in uh, the trouble. The next one is, uh, uh, is very important. If you think about the database from a, a very high point of view, what it does is it takes the queries, uh, process them and returns your uh, your results. So the query performance is uh, quintessentially where database performance is. And what that means is by really examining what queries you have, which queries are slow, which queries are efficient, and fixing them, you can really get a lot of mileage, right? Uh, if you optimize the query, either by changing the query or by adding the index, you may speed it up by a thousand times or more which is far more than you can get by adjusting the settings or getting the instance size. So that is very important to, to get right. Uh, at uh, Percona, we have a tool for that called Percona Monitoring and Management, which allows you to find the queries which are, uh, which are causing the loads, to understand uh, how those queries are executed, how many rows they traverse, are we waiting on disk I.O and so on and so forth, as well as uh, uh, check explain for those queries. I don't specify that as a separate, but that is something which I would a everyone want to uh, encourage both developers and DBAs to really learn to read explain for the queries and to see what is a good explain and bad explain. And there you can easily tune some queries based on what explain is uh, uh, telling you. That is a very uh, powerful tool, which uh, I would uh, highly uh, recommend you to, uh, to learn. Now, there is also a pro tip about the queries. Well, the best way to optimize a query is actually to eliminate the query. Right? You would be surprised, but in uh, many applications, there are fair amount of queries which are not needed which may be coming from the old application version. So maybe developers just do something uh, like generic. Oh, you know what? I initialize this object, which loads all this data. And then I call it method, which only uses 5% of the data and doesn't touch anything else, right? Uh, looking uh, at uh, examining the queries, which given application action, transaction generates, and actually questioning whether they all should happen and they actually uh, generate the data which application needs or, or changes which application should be doing is a very mm, powerful trick. The next thing is to get rid of unused versions. And that is uh, especially important for applications which have been around for a long time. Because as you optimize your queries, chances are you are adding more and more indexes. And as, as you change the queries, some of those indexes may not be needed anymore. So what you want to do is to check on your uh, unused indexes, which is actually easy to do with a sys schema, but only if you run MariaDB 10.6 uh, or uh, later. Uh, and then after you've done that, you can use uh, uh, this uh, new feature in MariaDB called ignored index 
to temporarily disable index to see if your application still runs well. Why do you want to do that instead of disable, uh, instead of removing the index altogether? Well, uh, the reason is uh, if you remove the index, it may take a while to add it back, which can actually cause a downtime if you remove your own index. At the same time, enabling index back is a very quick operation. The next thing I would recommend is to learn schema uh, design. Uh, and that is uh, similar to explain, is not a triviality, but more a labor undertaking, but that is a very important one. Because if you design this schema, which doesn't really fit your application needs of data storage and uh, retrieval, then you cannot really just rewrite the queries to optimize them. Your tools will be limited. You also, for a bad schema, would not be able to just add indexes of, uh, so everything just works uh, wonderful. If your schema really bad, then uh, uh, you will have very bad performance and there is just nothing you can do about that. So learn how to design schema properly, uh, right? And uh, uh, at least kind of long term, consider evolving the schema so it is optimal for your application. Now, as your application grows, sooner or later, it will grow beyond what a single server can happen uh, can handle, even if that is a very uh, well-performing, well-optimized server. And that is where you need to learn the tools of how you can go beyond the single server. One uh, approach which uh, you take with uh, MariaDB is replication where you would create several copies of data. And then using technique of read-write splitting, you can send read queries to, uh, to uh, replicas. And that can really give uh, quite a good benefits in performance, as well as source high ability, uh, uh, as well as uh, gives you some flexibility in uh, operations, such as, for example, you can uh, upgrade your database infrastructure without downtimes. So if you think uh, about all uh, really large scale production deploy deployments are uh, using some sort of, uh, of uh, uh, replication. You can use a read write splitting uh, as a technique and application to make sure you're changing the read, uh, sending the read queries to read replicas while writes have to go to a primary database which is able to uh, serve them. Another techniques, we, uh, the technique which is used even in a larger scale is called the sharding. Then uh, instead of just replicating data, you are spreading your data, kind of slicing it across many uh, database, uh, uh, database cluster. And that can really uh, help you to deploy MariaDB on a giant scale. So for example, uh, they, uh, companies like uh, uh, Facebook or Dropbox, they have a shared environment with many thousands of uh, servers or clusters uh, where data is uh, as, uh, spread across. If you look at the open source uh, uh, environment uh, in uh, uh, th this space, uh, the, you can also look at technologies such as uh, VTES or uh, TIDB, while not specifically MariaDB, they can also help to uh, scale their uh, applications. One particular technology you also can uh, use is called Proxy SQL, which can help you with connection management. For example, if you need to uh, handle many thousands of uh, connection, the things like caching of result sets, which uh, again can do uh, wonders, especially for uh, of, uh, complicated queries where results don't uh, really change uh, that frequently, as well as uh, actually helping you to implement that read-write splitting technology. Now in the MariaDB enterprise space, there is also technology called uh, Max Scale, which uh, has uh, some of the uh, similar features, but because we are at uh, FOSDEM, the conference focused on open source technologies, I choose to uh, 
uh, focus on proxy SQL here, which unlike max scale is fully open source solution. The next tip would be to get rid of uh, junk. And uh, that is another thing which may come to you as a surprise, but if you look at uh, the database, especially which have been around for a while, you know, a few years, uh, there is often a lot of junk in the production. Sometimes it is unused tables. Sometimes you can have uh, data which is kind of uh, spanning many, many years uh, back while you don't really need that for production uh, operators. It may be some sort of, uh, you know, debugging tables, logs. It may be some columns which you don't use anymore you can uh, clean, uh, clean that up and have your data smaller, faster, and easy to uh, manage uh, with that. If you need to archive the data, for example, to move it to a different server or maybe to you know, full flat file, so you can still have it, but uh, uh, don't have it in your, as a part of your operational database, you can use uh, PT archival tool. The next thing to consider is network latency. In so many uh, uh, cases in my career, I would see uh, extremely poor performance explain, uh, experience by application just because a database and application server are too far from each other. And what is important to understand here is where you may have a single request from user to application, a page view or API call, that API may end up in tens or even maybe hundreds of database queries their latency adds up, right? So what that means is what you want to keep your database as close to your application server as, uh, uh, as possible. If you're running in the cloud, think if you can do it in the same availability zone or at the very least, at least the same version. If not, think about the distance and number of hops and understand what bandwidth is not the same as latency. I have seen so many times and somebody uh, uh, faced the question, okay, what is the network between your application database service as well? We have dedicated 10 gigabit connection. And then you ask more details and it's, uh, uh, you learn what there may be thousand kilometers different uh, distance between those things, which guess what? Speed of light is finite and thousand kilometers, well, is quite a bit of latency compared to what you can uh, get in a modern data server. With the next one, I will cheat a little bit. And I, uh, on my uh, uh, tip number this, uh, 10, will be kind of multiple tips really uh, merged together. I would encourage you to really check for resource bottlenecks and understand in your case, what exactly is uh, a cause of bottleneck uh, in the system and uh, then potentially alleviate uh, that uh, uh, bottleneck. If you look at really the low level, the, uh, you typically would have one of those four primary resources being most consumed in limited database performance, CPU, memory, disk, uh, and uh, network. CPU is kind of uh, interesting because uh, you may be either bound uh, by number of cores, right? In general CPU capacity, if you have a lot of concurrent queries going on, or in certain cases, your application may be suffering because, uh, uh, because you have some single threaded query, which just doesn't uh, run uh, as fast as you need. And because of that, you may need to get a faster cores or more cores. And these are, uh, different choices. One of the tools uh, you can think about wherever you are having enough uh, CPUs is also to look at the run queue latency, which pretty much tells us how long it takes before uh, their query is ready to run, right, uh, on the CPU. Uh, or it has to wait in the queue before it's actually scheduled by uh, operating system. And uh, I really love this uh, IOVisor VCC tool collection, which really can help you to see that. Uh, 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 to see that. Another tool 
to consider uh, or another thing to, uh, to be aware of uh, is a CPU steal, which can happen in some uh, cloud instance and, and which really can uh, make your database instance to go much slower than you expect. If you're running in the cloud and you need more CPU, you can choose uh, so-called uh, compute optimized instances with this example from AWS, but you can find the same in other cases. Another thing uh, uh, to focus uh, on or another resource is, is memory. In case of, uh, of memory, uh, getting more memory allows you to uh, uh, cache more data, which is uh, uh, much faster than relying on disk. I would also encourage you not to run out of a virtual memory because if you do, well, uh, guess what? You will uh, uh, see the crash and database will take a time to recover causing some application uh, downtime. You also want to uh, avoid serious swapping because it's better to have a smaller buffer pool, smaller cache than swapping. But do not look just at the amount of swap space used, see if there is swam swapping in a significant level, right? Many, many megabytes a second going on at persistent level. Now, faster storage is also very uh, the important uh, the thing uh, to consider. Uh, know though what memory is faster uh, than storage. So if you can get enough memory to cache your data, it is better than even faster storage, especially for reads. But uh, for writes, you want to uh, look at the uh, storage uh, uh, options. Uh, you can, uh, it is a good idea to understand what kind of IO you are uh, getting, specifically reads uh, and writes, because different uh, systems are better at uh, handling reads uh, or, um, or writes. And in particular, I would look at uh, IO latency and how it behaves with, uh, uh, with your, uh, your, your workload. If you have a IO latency spikes, then you have a more load on your system. That often means that you do not have enough capacity on uh, uh, your storage in terms of performance. For database, besides reads and writes, I would also encourage to think about this special kind of IO called F-Sync, which basically says, flash my buffer directly to, uh, to a disk. And that can uh, be taken uh, uh, more latency or different performance compared to a normal uh, uh, disk IO. And certain IO storage systems may be good in general reading writes, but quite slow with, um, with uh, F-Syncs. Uh, one of the tools, I also like to use here, besides the average, is uh, another tool from BC, uh, BCC Collection, which allows you to see the latency of uh, uh, block uh, device and in particular distributions. I use this tool many times, for example, to show cloud vendors what they may have some outliers, which really can hurt your database performance, right? Because if you have, let's say, log write stalls for five seconds, even if it's just one write out of a million, it will cause your database completely stall for five seconds, causing kind of, you know, bad blips in your uh, user experience or worse. And now I will cheat again and give you another advice number 11 to tune by the credit card uh, if you have to. Actually, in many environments, especially in the cloud, if you, you have unusual traffic spike, uh, performance problems, it is actually maybe a good idea to say, hey, let us for now increase the instance size uh, and uh, use it as a temporary solution until we can find what is the root cause and other ways to uh, optimize the data. Or in certain cases, when you have a temporary traffic spike, you just get, can uh, do it uh, temporarily and then scale back to your uh, normal uh, instance size. Well, uh, with that, that is uh, all I have. Uh, happy tuning, applying those tips, uh, as well as uh, there is a lot of other information you'll uh, find on this topic.
with that, uh, thank you and uh, enjoy the rest of the conference.